what's going on guys? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to get Raspbian XP or Raspbian 95 up and running on your Raspberry Pi. Now, this is brought to us by a good buddy of mine named Salvador who runs the Pi Labs YouTube channel. You have to check that out. He does a lot of great work with the Raspberry Pi and Box86. But he basically just took Raspbian, skinned it with the XP look or the 95 look if you wanna choose that one. And he added a lot of great apps in here so we really don't have to do much, especially with Box86. And if you're not familiar with Box86, this is an emulator that allows you to play x86 based PC games, be it old or newer indie games on your Raspberry Pi 4. And a lot of them run really well. He's got a full playlist over on his channel with lots of great games that can be run with this operating system. So in this video, I'm gonna walk you through the install of Raspbian XP or Raspbian 95 for your Raspberry Pi 4. We're gonna go over setting a root password here because when we install this, there's no password at all and we definitely wanna add one. And finally, I'm gonna show off a little bit of gameplay with Box86 because that's really one of the big reasons that Salvador put this together for us, both Raspbian XP and Raspbian 95. So if you wanna get this awesome variant or distro of Raspbian installed on your Raspberry Pi 4, Let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna be using a Windows PC to install this to my SD card. By the way, I'm using a 32 gigabyte card, a Raspberry Pi 4, four gigabyte model, and an ice tower cooler because this does come overclocked to two gigahertz out of the box. All right, so let's go ahead and get Raspbian XP, or if you choose Raspbian 95 installed to our SD card for our Raspberry Pi 4. Now, the first thing we need to do is head to the links in the description. First link is gonna be Pi Labs YouTube channel. Now keep an eye on his new videos because he might update these and I'm sure he will down the road. But as making this video, this is the latest version of Raspbian XP with all the fixes he's come up with. And this is actually a really good buddy of mine. His name is Salvador. I recommend subscribing to his channel, looking through his backlog because he does a lot of work with Box86 and this allows us to emulate x86 games on the Raspberry Pi or on ARM devices. And in my opinion, it is the fastest x86 emulator for ARM right now, especially on the Raspberry Pi 4. He's not the main developer of Box86, but he does a lot of work. The main developer of Box86 goes by the name Pitip Seb, and I'm not exactly sure if I pronounced that right. I'm, I'm pretty sure I butchered it. But either way, he's done a great job with Box86 and you definitely need to check it out. And I'm gonna leave a link to the GitHub in the description. Definitely go check this project out. It's absolutely amazing, and I will have a big video on Box86 coming up in the next couple days. I'm gonna show you how to run a ton of great x86 games on your Raspberry Pi using Box86 and Raspbian 95 or Raspbian XP. But with that out of the way, let's go ahead and grab the image. And this is a Google Drive link. You will need to sign in. Click download here and download. So this is the latest version, 1.1.7. I'm sure it's gonna be updated in the future. Like I mentioned, keep an eye on his channel. While that's downloading, we're gonna grab an application to allow us to flash this to an SD card, and we're gonna be using Etcher for this. This works for Mac, Windows, or Linux, so you can flash this to your SD for your Raspberry Pi on any operating system. I'm on a Windows machine, so I'm gonna grab the portable version. And as soon as these are finished downloading, I'm gonna place them on my desktop for easy access. All right, so now I have Etcher downloaded. I'm gonna drag it right on my desktop and the Raspbian XP image. So the first thing we need to do is extract the image. So we're gonna right click and extract to its own folder. Now you can use WinRAR or 7-Zip. I'll leave links to WinRAR in the description. So we now have the image extracted. It's in this folder here. It's 8.7 gigabytes. It'll self-expand when we flash it to our SD card and boot it up. So let's go ahead and flash it. We're gonna open up Etcher. And I already have my SD card inserted into my PC. I'm just using a cheap USB to micro SD card reader, or you can use your SD card reader located on your laptop. We're gonna select image, and we're gonna navigate to where we extracted that image. Mine's on my desktop. It's a disk image file, Raspbian XP. Double click. Make sure we have the correct SD card chosen. I'm using a 32 gigabyte card. Choose continue and flash. Now Etcher's gonna go ahead and flash that image to our SD card so it'll work properly on our Raspberry Pi 4. We're gonna give this some time to finish up. All right, so our SD card is now flashed with Raspbian XP or Raspbian 95, whichever image you chose. I'm gonna move over to my Raspberry Pi 4. I'm gonna insert the SD card, plug in my HDMI, my mouse and keyboard, and my power. So here it is. I have my keyboard, my mouse, my HDMI plugged into my Raspberry Pi 4. Like I mentioned, I'm using that Raspberry Pi 4, four gigabyte model with the ice tower cooler. 
I just inserted my SD card, plugged in my power. I'm going to give it a little time to boot up. It needs to expand the file system so we can use the full capacity of the SD card. But once that's done, it'll boot right into Raspbian XP. And there's one last thing you should change before you really start using the operating system, and that is the password. Now, there's no password associated right now. He set it up that way on purpose, but I'm going to show you how to add a root password and a user password very easily as soon as we're into the operating system. We even have the little Raspbian XP boot logo coming up, and it'll boot right into the desktop for us. You can start using it just like this, but I do recommend changing your password or at least adding a new password before you even connect online because anybody that's on your network right now can access this Raspberry Pi over SSH. So I'm going to go ahead and connect this to my capture card to make it a little easier to look at. I'm going to show you how to change that password and then I just want to give you a quick demo with Box86. There are free games that run on here just fine and that's one of the main reasons Salvador put this whole thing together. So right now we're pretty unsecure because we don't have a password. We're going to go ahead and change the user and the root password. Before we even connect to the internet, let's go ahead and get this out of the way. We need to open up Terminal. We can do that by going to Start, Terminal. And from within Terminal, we're just going to type in sudo passwd. We're going to enter our new password. Make sure you remember it. Retype the password and it's now updated successfully. So we have a password on our Raspberry Pi so nobody else can access it over SSH without that password. Now, we can connect online if we want to. I personally use Ethernet, but you can also connect to Wi-Fi right here. I'm gonna plug in my Ethernet now. And you're done, you're now up and running Raspbian XP or Raspbian 95 if you chose such. Very easy to use. I love this interface. There's a few other things I'd like to show you guys while we're here. And one of the main reasons that Salvador even made this and released it was for Box86. So I'm going to go ahead and update Box86. We'll just double click on the update Box86 icon. It's going to update it for us. Give it some time to finish up. All right, so Box86 is finished updating. If you're going to be using Box86, I recommend doing this at least once a week. This is going to allow us to run x86 based games on our Raspberry Pi. Now I do want to mention that not all games are going to work. There's a lot of great older games that work like Heretic, Serious Sam, Half-Life, and there's a lot of newer indie games that work really well, especially when you're downloading them from GOG. Like Undertale, Papers, Please, even Hyper Light Drifter works on the Raspberry Pi 4. There is one free game that I can get out of the way real quick. We're going to head over to this website. I'll leave a link in the description. This is a free game you can download. It's called The Cursed Castle. We're going to scroll down and we're going to download the Linux version, the Linux x86 version right here for Ubuntu. So we're going to let this finish up. It's only 50 megs. Now this was not officially designed to run on an ARM-based single board computer. So now that I have it downloaded, I'm just going to open it up, show in folder. We're going to extract it here. I can go right into this game, the Cursed Castle, and choose Runner. Now this is the x86 version of the Cursed Castle running using Box86 on the Raspberry Pi running Raspbian XP or Raspbian 95. And it actually works pretty well at 1080p, but they do recommend going down to 720p and you can do that from the start menu in Raspbian XP. Type in display from the search bar and change your resolution to 720p. But as you can see, it's working quite well here. And keep in mind, not every single x86 game is supported with Box86, but I am waiting on a list from Salvador. He's tested a lot of different games, I'd say over a hundred, and he's got a ton of them running really great. So I'll have a video coming up using Box86 and Raspbian XP very soon, so keep an eye on the channel. But yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. I really appreciate you watching. I will leave links to Pi Labs YouTube channel in the description and Box86 GitHub. I had a few people asking about an install tutorial using Raspbian XP, so I figured I'd get this out of the way. Definitely browse through Pi Labs videos. If there's any other game you want to see running with Box86 and Raspbian XP, just let me know in the comments below, and in my next video, I'll put them in there for you. All links for everything mentioned in this video will be in the description. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.